You may have seen a thing on the internet last week about trading for Juan Soto. Well, I hopped on Locked On Nationals with our friend Josh Neighbors and talked about it. You are Locked On MLB Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is a crossover edition of Locked On MLB Prospects and Locked On Nationals. I am Josh Neighbors, the host of Locked On Nationals. Joining me, it's Lindsey Crosby, the host of Locked On MLB Prospects. Lindsey, it's been a minute. You and I have not talked since, I guess we're trying to clear things up with the, the CBA. The CBA, right? And we're playing baseball. Uh, the Nationals are playing baseball. They're not playing it very well, <laughs> which has which is the reason why you and I are talking. Um so there was a piece last week, and I've mentioned this a bunch of my show. People are probably tired of hearing it. But, um, you know, of a, a Juan Soto trade movement, maybe Buster only had an article that was on ESPN Plus. Or, you know, it was on Plus. It was not like it was reporting or anything. But rival execs thought the Nats could be compelled to move Juan Soto, which, you know, once again, take that with a grain of salt, folks. Yeah. But it got me thinking, like, okay, just first question, like, can you trade Juan Soto? Like, is he tradable? Is there a good enough package? Technically, yes. I think if you trade Juan Soto, it's literally going to be the largest trade in baseball history. I mean, I think about the comp for me is you see that big trade in football. Uh, what was it? It was the Vikings. I think it was the Vikings and the Cowboys. And it was like the entire contents of one draft went <laughs> from one team to the other. I think it, was, it was the Herschel Walker trade. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of comparable here because... Every pack, and I have I have trade packages here for you. Like we're going to grade these, but every single one of these packages, I want to say, has somewhere between four and five top ten prospects in them, and then some, and then other things. So massive package, and I think the big kind of question here is: there's teams that have the prospects to trade for Juan Soto. There's teams that have or theoretically should have salary cap room to sign Juan Soto. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much overlap there is between those two. That's the huge question. So I was, I guess it's like the big thing off the top is when you consider the trade market for him, right? Like, could there be teams that want him just, just until they can, I mean, hell, maybe he gets traded the second time. Who knows? But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there is a chance that look, he has got two and a half years left. Ostensibly, there are probably teams out there that want him just for the duration. And I know he's going to set records. You know, we think he's going to set records at least in arbitration, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he's know he's having a down year, but like, he's going to have one down year at 23. I think I, I think I'll take the you know the upside of things. It are is there a group of teams out there you you could see? Maybe just going for that. Look, we'll take the two years and whatever titles we can get. We'll, we'll give up whatever we have to because it could maximize the window we have going. I think there's conversations about that, but my concern is Washington's going to want so much for him yes. that it's not going to happen. So I think there's going to be a situation where a team is going to make an offer, and in their mind, they are discounting the offer a bit because they don't intend to sign him long term. But Washington, in the end, doesn't care what you do with Juan Soto. You got Juan Soto and the ability to sign him if you want to. So I see that there's going to be some teams who are going to make that kind of, I say lowball offer, it's still going to have three top 10 prospects in it. But like they'll make a lowball offer because they don't intend to, to sign him long term and the Nationals say no. And then when you're looking at what is it going to take to sign him, I mean, there's a chance he might be the first $500 million player in baseball history. So that's, that's where this begins, right? That That's where this, this starts. And, and that's why the nationals, if you trade him, you must trade him. Like you have to view it. Like we're giving you 15 years of Juan Soto, right? Yeah. 14 years. We're not, we're giving you a decade plus of a top most, five player of yes. Of the most promising young player in baseball. That's what we're giving. Look, because he's he's better than Tatis. He's mm-hmm. better than Franco. Like he's just he is. He is better than those guys. I mean, he's having a bad year, and his his OBP is like a three seventy. And I mean, he su- like for his standards, he sucks right now. Teams are still <laughs> horrified of him. They're still yeah. horrified, and they should be. He still like, won't pitch not- to Juan Soto. Right. Like his his career line right now: two ninety seven, four twenty eight, five forty three. 
106 home runs across 500 games, <laughs> over 19 war in 500 games. Uh, Runner-up for Rookie of the Year. He's been a three-time MVP finalist, a two-time Silver Slugger, All-Star for the first time last year. What took so long? Yeah. And it's like, and he's only 23. Right. It's just, it's absurd. He's making somewhere around like $17 million this year, assuming what arbitration is going to be. You're going to assume probably 24 and $30 million in the next two years. And so if you look at the supposed Nationals uh, long-term extension that they have 10 years, $350 million, if you take out those arbitration years, that's a 10-year, $280 million deal. And like, he might get double that. It's just insane to me that, that this is even a thing, but Scott Boris is his agent. And so right. you know Scott Boris is going to maximize the money you can get for Juan Soto. Yeah, it's the scary part, right? Is he's going to try mm-hmm. to max. Now, I, you know, I've been, I've been trying to think, like, is, is somebody going to pay half a million dollars for a single player? Half a billion. It, it, it is half of a billion dollars. <laughs> It's just, it's, it's an, you know, it, it's, you know, hey, five, like when you say $500 million, it sounds different when you're like, this is half of a B. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can go and buy professional sports franchises. Yeah. Like, 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 you know, more than one if you wanted to. With you want to own the entire NHL? You can do right. that. <laughs> you, can go and buy it. you can go and buy an entire division, Metropolitan, go and buy, buy a Metropolitan division, you know? And like, that is, that is what we have to think here. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious because the the other aspect of this that we have to understand is the Nationals might be up for sale. So it's the one kind of monkey wrench in all of this. We see this all the time in football, well, really in every single sport. Very, very seldom does one regime make decisions um, and then flip regimes, right? And this is yeah. one where Mike Briss has in the last year of his contract. Dave Martinez is the manager last year of his contract. And the owners might be interested in selling. So, like all those signs point towards probably no. But hey, if the sale thing gets done, you know, there could be there is a world where the sale gets done. The new owners say, you know, we like Mike Rizzo. He just won a championship recently. Like you know, it's justify that. And then we the manager part. I'm actually not sure that matters as much. That's I, I know you're very well versed in that conversation. Hey, does the manager <laughs> matter as much anymore in baseball? That's that's yeah. that conversation for a different day. Yeah. But like I think there is a world where actually that could get cleared up. You know relatively soon mm-hmm. and we are kind of okay now the question is do you, do you resign or not but the, the big thing for me is the nationals have not taken their last bite at the apple the idea that somehow they were like all right well he turned on the first one i guess, I guess we we're done freedom. it's like yeah we're done yeah no this guy is not just an he's a financial asset he put i mm-hmm. always say it the two things jerseys on backs asses and seats you know bryce was the same type of guy nash fans are familiar with him but mm-hmm. good like I always just think, Lindsay, where I go to baseball games and you walk around the concourse, look down in the sections, see whose name is on the backs of jerseys. You go to Philly, a whole lot of Harper. If you go to Nats games, there's still a whole lot, lot of Harper. Harper. There's still a lot of Harper. Harper, Harper and Soto. Right, yeah, Harper and Soto. So that he's such a valuable asset in that way too. Yeah, and and see, so I'm actually opposite of you. I think yeah. this is going to be figured out one way or the other before the sale is finalized. And if you wow. think about it, if I'm an owner who is coming into the organization, I am spending over a billion dollars to buy this team because professional sports franchises, baseball and football, don't go for less than a billion dollars now. If I'm spending a billion dollars on this team, I want to know, does that Mm. price include a long-term Juan Soto deal or not? And so it might be something where when it's down to just a few groups left, still in the running, baseball kind of checks in with them and kind of finds out their temperature one way or the other because – there's a big difference in me paying 1.2 billion and paying 1.7 billion if Juan Soto's not included. And I think the value of the franchise surprisingly goes down if there's not a Juan Soto. So if I'm if I'm buying the team, I want to know if he's there before I agree to a price. So you don't think the ability cuz you know, I guess what I'm saying here is the autonomy to make the choice, right? Right. Like we're like the learner family saying, "Look, we're not going to make this choice for you." Now, I will say you know, I don't think somebody's going to buy the team. I think you're right in this. Nobody's buying the team being like, well, we're going to trade them, right? Yeah. Like, right. Yeah, we're going to buy a team to trade Juan Soto. I don't think you buy it like that because the asset immediately loses value. So I think you're right yeah. in that respect. I just think it, it's 
if the family wants to get out, right, you'd think that maybe they aren't the ones setting the terms of that deal with the employee. That's yeah. why, that's the only reason I push back. But I would I would say, yeah, nobody wants to buy the one Sodalus Nationals. Or yeah. somebody does, but it's not really as good of a property. Yeah. You know, it's not really as good of a property, I guess you could say. And that and that may be something where once there's a, a price kind of agreed to, it's with the understanding, kind of quietly, right. not part of the deal that, hey, this is the maximum that we're willing to, you know, once we have the team to do for Juan Soto. And that's all kind of worked out behind the scenes without us knowing about it. And that is either they have a handshake deal or it's already signed to. And the new ownership group has signed off on the Juan Soto deal, even if it happens before the sale is finalized. But I definitely think that that's going to be resolved one way or the other before the sale is done, just for that certainty. If I'm I'm spending $2 billion on a baseball franchise, that, that ink better be on paper already. Yeah, that's so. it's totally fair. I, I bet some people are like that. that and, and look, yeah, those, you know, that's just one extra layer. Those parties have to work with, you know, obviously mm -hmm. the current ownership and the current management. And then, you know, so, so there's a lot of con, it's, it's very convoluted. But we are going to talk about this trade like it could happen, like we're good to go, like we could actually do it. Uh, first, quick word from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you all by LinkedIn. It's spring. Uh, you guys know that because baseball is happening. It's time for renewal, for growth personally and professionally. As your small business grows, LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a job post in minutes on LinkedIn to reach your network and beyond on the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. That's okay. well over half a half a billion that we were just talking about. Uh, you guys can go do that at LinkedIn Jobs. Helps you guys find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Every single week, nearly 40 million people uh, are on LinkedIn searching, trying to find jobs. Either way, it's a very good job market. And you guys can post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash lockdown MLB. That's LinkedIn.com slash lockdown MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Lindsay, is your LinkedIn game good? Mine's not. Mine's could be a lot better, I'll be honest. Mine's not bad. I use it for work too. And so I kind of have a decently developed LinkedIn thing. I don't share enough stuff because I just, mm. I don't care about that. But like I use it to look up people and, and connect with folks who I do work with and business with. So it's not bad. It's not this bad. read is always a reminder to me that I should probably remove the picture of me in high school on my LinkedIn and yeah, probably be more active on that. Yes. Uh, LinkedIn jobs guys, they'll help you guys post a job and also help you find a job if you need to. All right. So Lindsay. Yes. Um, who like, let's just do this. Who can get it done? All right, just list me the teams, either short term, long term, whatever. Right. Who could get try uh, not get this done? Who could try to get this done? It's by the operative word try. To get okay, this done. so there's like the group that financially we know can do it, as in they don't have a ton of money committed in 2025, and then there's the teams that have the prospects. So like, yeah, just to know, he's under contract. He's in, he's excuse me, under contract. Yeah, yeah. Contract. He he this year. Next year, the following year, he is on arbitration. So that, just that going forward. Two and a half yeah. years right now. Yeah, he's technically not a free agent until that 2025. So you look at like money-wise, there's some teams who are probably out. Like the Phillies. You think of the Phillies as a team that spends a lot of money. But in 2025, they have over $105 million in salary already committed. And that's not counting guys eligible for arbitration and stuff. And that's just long-term deals between Harper and Real Muto and Schwarber and Castellanos and all that. So they're probably out. Uh, the Mets, we think of the Mets as a team that spends a ton of money. The Mets only have two guys under contract in 2025 between Francisco Lindor and Marte, $54 million. That's it. Uh, Dodgers don't have more than $70 million out They have because they have Mookie Betts, Chris Taylor, and Freddie Freeman. And that's it. And... I think we'll have a good idea about the Dodgers because Juan Soto's best friend is Trey Turner, who plays on the Dodgers and is a free agent after this season. I can see a scenario where Trey Turner talks to the Dodgers and finds out, hey, you're going to try to make a deal for Juan Soto. I'll resign. Let's bring Juan Soto. I'm going to go recruit him to come here. Um, there's some teams that like that are pretty obvious when you look at it. They're out. The Angels. They've got $105 million committed. They've got Trout. I'd love to see Trout and Soto in the same outfield, but Rendon's owed $39 million. They've got a couple other guys on the books right there. Probably can't do it. Red Sox, maybe. They've got $40 million. If you don't count Xander Bogarts, he's probably going to, you know. 
Um, Padres, $80 million committed. They're probably not in. Um, one that a lot of people have talked about that I kind of like, the Blue Jays. $60 million committed right this there. This is the one where I saw people tweeting pictures of Soto and Blue Jays hats and jerseys. So yes. yes, this one's interesting. But here's the thing. Vlad was a Super 2. So he's in his fourth year of arbitration in 25. So I don't think you can do a long-term deal for Vlad and Juan Soto. You've got to do one or the other. Because I don't see the Blue Jays going over the luxury tax to bring these guys on. So interesting stuff there when it comes to to like money. But then the prospects, uh, I've got some deals here. I want to go through some of these deals and get your live feedback as the Locked On Nationals guy. These are deals that either uh, Locked On hosts have sent us or I've seen these floating around on the internet. I plugged them in. I've got the trade calculator values and everything. Um, so here we go. First one, the Seattle Mariners, number two overall prospect, George Kirby, their number uh, pitcher, their number three prospect, Noel V. Marte, a shortstop, pitcher Matt Brash, their number four overall prospect, and two MLB players, Kyle Lewis and Jared Kalinick. So that comes out to, in, on MLB trade values, to about 192 points of value. Juan Soto by himself is 206 points of value. So this is like, this is three of their top four prospects, two major league players, and it's still not, none of these trades equal in value. Not a single one of these does on MLB trade values. Right. So, but I think the deal breaker here is Julio Rodriguez. I mean, if I'm the Mariners, I'm not making this deal and getting rid of Julio Rodriguez because I want these two Dominican outfielders to play together for the next decade. And if I'm the Nationals, I'm not making this deal without getting Julio Rodriguez back. And I think that's probably, I, I think it's not going to happen because of that, but I want your thoughts. I, I, I just want to tell you, like, so there, whenever we see trades happen, mm -hmm. we always see, wow, Team X kept player X, prospect X. Wow, Mackenzie Gore being the great example here, right? Like, I, I noticed the number of times I've seen, wow, Padres have kept Mackenzie Gore. Thank God they kept him. Um, it's going to take the guy you didn't want to trade oh, yeah. to get Juan Soto, right? And that's the big thing. And I understand. And some. That. And some. And I, I think so. My big question as we go through all these is like, the Nationals have to get something in terms of major league value. Mm -hmm. Back to them, like like proven major league value. Because here's a big reason. Uh, we're watching it right now with the Nets. Like you need vets who are semi good, who have played the game, to make sure the thing doesn't fall off the tracks. The young guys need to learn, and so that's why you Kyle Lewis, you know Jared Kalenic. Like I got some concerns about Jared Kalenic, right? And yeah, it's not it's not going exactly to plan right now. It doesn't. It rarely does it, right? Rarely does it. Right. But like it's not going. Swimmingly, I think you could say right now for Clint. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So that's a no. Okay. Yes. You mentioned MLB talent. I've got another one here. Um, and I actually took this is a crowdsourced one that has been sent to our locked on Astros hosts. So their number one prospect, catcher Corey Lee, their number three prospect, right hand pitcher Hunter Brown, their number four prospect, outfielder shortstop Pedro Leon, MLB -er Chaz McCormick. That was the deal that was sent. And then I'm adding in outfielder Kyle Tucker and pitcher, MLB pitcher Luis Garcia. So all of that together comes out to about 197 points of value. So all that for Juan Soto. I, I just I love Astros fans being like, how about Chas McCormick and then a couple prospects? No. 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 Now I think Luis Garcia is interesting. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. Am I am I crazy for thinking I want a young guy who might be kind of an all like all star ish in this trade? You are absolutely not crazy am for I, that. No. Crazy, I, if you're I, giving up Juan Soto, you need right, like an right. MLB all star right now. Right. So I, who like also might be around his age. Right. Yeah. Once again, like I I think the trade has to entail the guy you don't want to give up who you haven't seen yet, and the an guy you have seen you also don't yeah. want to give up. So For the I Astros, yeah. you have to get shortstop Jeremy Pena in that deal. Yes. 
Like, if you don't get Jeremy Pena, it's not a deal. And the Astros, I mean, our Astros hosts are against the deal before I threw in Kyle Tucker and Luis Garcia. Uh, what are they? Sm- I, like, I love those. Dudes. Yeah. What do we got? They're, like, it's whatever it takes to get this guy. Exactly. And I've, I've mentioned this before. Like, that team, the Astros, in my opinion, are so good. And maybe this is why they say no. Mm-hmm. They're so good. They've been so good at maintaining that window. Like, I think maintenance has yeah. been the Astros' strength. They've done such mm-hmm. a good job. Keeping this thing on the tracks, keeping it together. I mean, this is a good team, even drafting, now. developing. Yeah, all and, that. and look, it's it's you know, I'm not even sure what iteration you'd you'd call this for them, but like Correa is, you know, I think was it Correa? Yeah, he was in the cover of Sports Illustrated, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the guy who's in the cover. He's gone, right? Um, you know, and Pena's Springer, played better than him all season. Yeah, it's, it's Springer, and Springer, and they've done such a good job drafting whatnot. It's like the guy who was on the cover, who is supposed to be the next generation, to to you know, is gone, and there's still. They were the World Series last year. They're always in the World Series, it feels like. So, you know, maybe from the Astros, maybe they're right. Maybe, maybe they're like, okay, maybe we don't we don't diverge from the course that has gotten us here because their their thing has always been quantity. Mm-hmm. That is what the Astros to me has always offered is a lineup full of quantity, whether it be Altuve and Alvarez and Springer and Correa and Bregman. It's like they, you know, they're all these guys who can just do a variety of things for you. To me, it's always been variety. So maybe those guys are right. Maybe maybe they are giving up too much. But look, that's what's going to too much is what it's going to take. Talking about giving up too much, I've got one here for the Yankees that I'm not even kidding. It broke the trade value site so, when I tried to do so it. So Yankees people are the most texts I've gotten. I've gotten I've gotten friends okay. and messages on Twitter. Yankees people are at me on this. All right, if you're ready for this, here we go. N- number one prospect, shortstop Anthony Volpe who I want to throw out, cannot hit a slider to save his life right now. Number two, shortstop Oswald Peraza. Number three, outfielder Emerson Pereira. Number six, lefty Ken Waldachuk. Number eight, outfielder Jason Dominguez. Five of the top ten. And MLBers Michael King and Gliber Torres. That's a lot of middle infielders. That's a, that's a lot of middle infielders. That's a lot of assets. It but, is. Put Juan Soto in that outfield with Judge. I mean, you put him oh in my that gosh. ballpark. You put him in that ballpark. It's, yeah. Because here's here's the thing about him, too. You know, I have to understand about like Juan Soto if you watch him. This guy does not discriminate uh, to where he hits the baseball. He is anywhere. At anywhere. And that ballpark usually favors anybody who can hit it anywhere. Yeah. Uh, just because, you know, all fences are pretty, usually pretty short there. So, look, the, you know, the Yankees, I mean, this is the dream, right? This is the dream. Yeah. I I do think they might have the guys to make it happen. What I would say is maybe you replace one of the middle infielders right. with a guy who's in the majors who's a good starting pitcher already. So I don't know what's the – I'm not sure what the contract situation with Luis Severino is at this point in time. Um, I'm not sure what his – I believe he's got, I want to say, two years of team control left, maybe three. So that, that's that's 100%. That's a guy I, I would change out one of the prospects for because the Nationals won the Nationals. Just ask for him also. You can right, do right. that. It's Juan right. Soto. Right. Actually, tag him on there. And he's the Just tag on Severino yeah. on the end of that. Yeah, um, and I, I think I think that would make I – know, I, I think that's the one thing here that best makes sense. Like that is – so – when I mentioned last year with the Astros, Luis Garcia part of this, yeah. right? Like I, I he's good. He once again, he's guys the Pistol World Series games. I'd like to know he's a little bit better than he is right now. Severino, like I kind of know this guy can this guy can hang like big time yeah. hang. So maybe that's why I go that way. But that might just be the kind of more conservative mind that I have. I, I just think they have to get something that's upper tier, big league quality back. You're not wrong. Right, because it's like we're giving these guys this guy for a decade, right? Or the, or the chance yeah. to keep him for a decade. Severino should be in this thing too. So I think you're on the right track with this. If you just sub out one of those middle infielder guys, or or in addition, right? Like you Drummond. said, um, yeah, love it. Okay, uh, last one for the uh, just one Soto trades because I've got some other stuff later. Um, and this is actually was suggested by Peter Pratt, our Locked On Marlins host. So MLBers Trevor Rogers, the right hand pitcher. And outfielder Jesus Sanchez with number two prospect right-hand pitcher Max Meyer, number three prospect shortstop Khalil Watson, and number nine prospect outfielder J.J. Blade. He said, that's it. That's the deal. Now, my proposal, Trevor Rogers and Pablo Lopez. 
I love that. I mean, actually, yeah. so out of all of them so far, this is the best one. And I don't think he's – so I know this one in terms of the MLB trade values. This one's one of the lower ones. Because it's like 165 for the Nats, but yeah. To be honest, I I love this. I mm-hmm. love this trade. Now, I know Meyer – Marlins had to turn it on a little bit. I know he's had some, you know, recently just some poor performances. Uh, but you know, look, this this stuff happens. It does. Yeah. You know, it happens all the time. We know this with happens. with prospects. Yeah. Yes, it's 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 volatile. Um, the Trevor Rogers, yes, that's a, that's. I, I think. Well, I think the reason why Nats fans, I think the reason I'm more apt to say yes, is I've seen him more often, right? Yeah. So I actually am a bit more apt to say yes. You chuck in Pablo Lopez. That's two guys there. Who address immediate needs? You plug them in immediately to the rotation. So I'm good. and they're pitching for a decade. And they're pitching for yes, and they're because they're both what Rogers is what twenty. They're, I mean they're both twenty. Yeah, 25, they're in their twenties. Yeah, they're, they're like they're, they're younger twenties. Um, yeah. Meyer, you know, could be a hit or miss. We'll see. But then you add uh, Khalil Watson. Here's the thing for me: they need to get a shortstop because they draft Brady House last year. He wants to so badly. You and I have talked about this before. We he, have. Not, he is not going to play shortstop. Nope. Not a I'm shortstop sorry. in MLB. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're not going to have Kevin Garnett playing shortstop. You're too tall. It's just not – we're not going to have that happen for you. you know, is Jabari that why the Smith, Pirates haven't called up O'Neill Cruz? Because he's 6'7"? Uh, God uh, darn it. Yeah, I know. You, you know, Jabari Smith for, for your, your, your Auburn, he's not playing shortstop there. You know, yeah. that, it's not going to happen. So – but he's a good player. We know that already. Yeah. Um, I think he factors in much um, – as, as much as the third baseman. They need to figure out the shortstop thing. Um, mm-hmm. they want to try Luis Garcia there. They're, uh, they're Luis Garcia. Yeah. Not the Ash. Multiple Look, Luis Garcias. I think it ends up at shortstop. I, or, excuse me. Uh, second base. Excuse me. Second base. I think that's, if it does work out, that's where it ends up. Mm-hmm. So, um, addressing, like getting somebody who is a shortstop, shortstop, shortstop would be 110% a, a, an aim of this trade. I think this trade that you've mentioned addresses that as well. So yeah. I love this one. I, I, yeah. Out of all of them so far, this, this is your one, favorite. This one's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Now, P- Peter Pratt sent this over with the caveat. He's like, the Marlins will never afford that contract, so it's not going to happen. But it would be nice. Um, and I do have some trades that are Soto and something else, like getting rid of a bad contract as well. So excited to get to those. Wait, bad contract? What? Nats don't have contracts, except for the Pickers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the two pitchers. All so, right. Yeah. Here we go. Let's do it. Okay, so people are probably asking how come none of the are going to ask how come none of these are getting rid of Steven Strasburg, and the reason for that is he has a full no trade clause, so he is probably not leaving unless he wants to. So none of these proposals include getting rid of Strasburg, but Patrick Corbin's got three years, eighty three million dollars left, so we're going to use some of these deals to get rid of him. So I've got two proposals. That this include, is very basketball of you. I appreciate this. Yes. Is very, this is very we're gonna, we're gonna use one soda to dump a bad contract. So yeah. here you go. Okay. So the first one, and this, I think this one's probably this is my second favorite of the entire thing right here. San Francisco Giants get Juan Soto and Patrick Corbin's contract. They give number one prospect, shortstop Marcel Luciano, who my listeners know all about. We talked about him just the other day. I think he's fantastic and is destined to be an all-star catcher Joey Bart their number two prospect number three outfielder Lu- Luis Mateos number five left-hand pitcher Kyle Harrison number six right-hand pitcher Will Bedner number nine shortstop Averson Ortega uh, right-hand pitcher Manuel Mercedes one of the recent IFA guys who they're they're high on he's not rated and MLB or Mike Yastrzemski all of that for Soto and Patrick Corbin. So here's the reason why I would not do this. Okay. Uh, Corbin's going to go and win the Cy Young in San Francisco. That's, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> it, it, this, this, this trade, this trade it's reeks, reeks of a change of scenery to a good winning franchise where it's like, look who's back. It's Patrick Corbin. And we're like, oh my God. What just happened? And, and he seals the Cy Young with a perfect game in <laughs> National yeah, State, yeah. yeah, in Washington. <laughs> yeah, right. His first game back in Washington since getting traded, he seals it with a perfect game it, where Juan Soto makes a diving catch to preserve I, it. I just see you just see it, you know, with the with the the cool summers, the the mist over the stadium, 
it's easier to keep the ball in the ballpark. And that, that, that's, it is a hitter friendly ballpark at times because they know obviously the weather that's happening there. But like it, that that ballpark, it's like you know what? If I'm on some nights, you can just it, it's just easy to you can rock, yep. you can roll boom, boom, because boom. the way just, the way the weather is hanging over the stadium, defense is behind you. I feel like that that's what happens. It's a yeah. good trade. But, it's um, a really good trade. But, but like you're horrified of trading Corbin to a good team because you're going to be like, oh man, he's pitching like the guy that we paid him to be. Yeah. Um, but no, okay. that's that's a lot. That, you know, that's not a rational way to say no to the trade. That's uh, six top ten prospects. Right. It's six top ten prospects, and also it's the Giants. So you kind of trust their their their. Now they don't have bad prospects. Yeah. The Giants. The Giants do have a. You know, they're really good. But it's almost an Island of Misfit Toys type deal. So it's like, you know, is it – it's a mixture of development. But also it's like, oh, my God, Darren Ruff's still in professional baseball. How is this still happening? And like, fantasy yeah. relevant. Like how yeah, is – yeah. yeah. How is yeah. this still happening? So I like that deal. It's a, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. I'm horrified of the outcomes. It seems it, – it sounds like three more World Series to the Giants. Yeah. So that's Okay. Like. Last deal, and this is the only team I believe, other than the Yankees, that was on both the financially may be able to do it and prospects have the guys to do it. And I this might be after the the I think it's after the Marlins deal. This might be my favorite one in here. Okay. Juan Soto, Will Harris, and Patrick Corbin go to Toronto. And in return, you get number one prospect catcher Gabriel Moreno because they have like two catchers right now. Number two, shortstop Arelvis Martinez. Number three, lefty Ricky Tiedemann. Number four, third baseman Jordan Groshans. Number five, right-hand pitcher Nate Pearson. And MLB player Kevin Biggio. So the the problem with this trade is okay. that it's a catcher number one. And the Nationals... They have their catcher. So they, just, Bear, they just got a catcher. Yeah. So K Bear Ruiz has been has been really good so far to start the season. He was in that uh the trade for Max Scherzer mm-hmm. and Trey Turner. So I think that's the reason why this one is probably a no. Um, but I think the Kevin Biggio thing obviously is very uh, you know, it's it's pretty enticing. Change the scenery guy to me. It, it's yeah, it's enticing to say yes to that, but I would say because their number one guy is a catcher. It, you know, that's going to probably set you back unless you can add a, a couple more guys in the back end. Yeah. And value wise, this one actually comes out as one of the lower ones. It's like 139 for the Nationals and 200 for the Blue Jays because mm. they, they, you, you ding some. Patrick Corbin has a negative trade value because of that contract, but uh, Will Harris shocking. going back adds a little bit to it. Yeah. Shocking. <laughs> you ought to see what Strasburg's number is. Yeah. yeah. Strasburg's like negative 100 you know, something. Well, it, Corbin feels like untradeable. Strasburg's like untradeable. That's the, he is. You cannot get rid of them. If you but don't you know, know the Strasburg deal, people, five years left, thirty-five mil a year, and he has eighty million deferred, um, twenty twenty-seven through twenty twenty-nine at twenty-six point six million per year for those three years, and a full no-trade clause. That's the Nat special is the deferred the deferred money. Scherzer's sure got deferred money. They had to push oh, back because he was still playing. He's very- <laughs> Pay him until he's like seventy. Like his it's family like, has, you know, generate. Shout out to that guy. Like, what? The, maybe uh, is he the best? You know, obviously the contract was one of the best, and that's that's got a good one. But like, is is Max Scherzer the best player rep for a union ever? I mean, this guy has he's Made got tons defer- of money, deferred money rolling, highest AAV. Got- for and also set a standard for guys who are at a certain age, right? Still getting paid. Uh, we had a video from the other day in the dugout with Eduardo Escobar congratulating him on the ten years of service time. It's like this this guy, like talking about getting it, he just one hundred and ten percent gets it. So Max Scherzer, we all we we'll, the, the the Nats fans will always love him. So. Shout out to him for that. But I'm yes, a Braves fan, and I love Max Scherzer. It's, it's hard not to. Even though it yeah. kicks your ass, it's really just hard not to love him. But I, I will say this. I, I think kind of my thought here is that, look, you and I will have this conversation because we might as well do it. Right? You know, it, was, it was mentioned, so we might as well do it, and people are talking mm-hmm. about it. Um, I think the most likely scenario is you and I are reconvening a year from now and saying, all right, they've made second. They've made third. They got nose. 
it's what, not happening. Right. It, that, that is that is the scenario where I think you and I are coming back together and talking about it. Or, you know, you and I are talking about, hey, is this is this the right contract? Is it worth it? Okay, that's what we do. I, I think next year is probably the time because that'll still be a year and a half of play left, right? You, mm-hmm. you know, it's almost kind of where Trey Turner was. The Nationals traded him. And so I, I think that's that's the most likely scenario. What do you think is kind of the most likely with this? I think it's that as well. I think it's something where the new, you know, the the sale process, you know, it's 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 either resolved and they say we're going to try to sign him or they realize he's not going to resign with us no matter what we do, we'll go ahead and buy the team knowing we're going to have to move him. And so probably a year from now, it just it's something where and I I apologize to Nats fans listening. You need something to put butts in seats right now. And that's what Juan Soto is that right now. They're not coming to see Nelson Cruz. They're not coming to see Josh Bell. They're coming to see Juan Soto. So he's putting butts in seats. From a business perspective, you can't move on from that this early. You have to give it a couple more tries, um, probably towards the end of the season, probably the start of spring training next year. You hear about the second offer, the third offer, and then around the trade deadline next year, you get a report. Uh, Juan Soto might be available and six teams all rush to go put out offers and we're having this exact same pod but with actual offers that people have actually given versus what I have found on Twitter and the internet. This has been great though. It's been really fun. Uh, Lindsay, has- where can people find you and your work and all of its variety? So I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. My show, Locked on MLB Prospects, is on Twitter at Locked on Farm. You can get it wherever you get podcasts and YouTube. Where can my listeners find you? Find me on Twitter at Josh Neighbors underscore. Find the show wherever you get your podcast. And you guys can find us on YouTube as well. Lindsay, it was a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Thank you.